Um, we had Howard Balzer in the last hour. And we went around talking about the Cardinals a little bit to the Hall of Fame voter. We also started out, obviously, with the passing of Jim Brown. And I was proud to put this jersey out there. Can you imagine Andy Robustelli and the kind of things that he, he was saying to me about playing against Jim Brown with him and Sam Huff and Cat Cabbage and Rosie Greer, Dick Mogileski, all those great players that played against Jim Brown. And I'll, I'll, before I bring um, Jason Cole in, uh, the, Andy used to say when Jim Brown ran through the line of scrimmage, you heard like a train whistle. It was just like a train whistle when he went through the line of scrimmage. And Jason also is a hall of fame voter. Do not forget his book. Please do me a favor. Amazon. It's a must read. And we bring in our hall of fame voter now. Boy, what a day, man. I mean, you talk about certain people and Jason, I put these guys out there. And I said this, there's certain dudes that when you watch game film on Jim Brown, Jerry Rice, Lawrence Taylor, Tom Brady, those are kind of your Mount Rushmore guys. Uh, but is there anybody more respected in that Hall of Fame in Canton as a football player than Jim Brown? Poof. Um, no, because you're talking about an era, you know, where it's tough guy football, you know, it's – I mean, the 50s, 60s are about as rough as the game gets. Probably maybe some of the 70s because of the defensive rules. Obviously, the 30s and 40s, it's just a different game. I mean, it's it's basically a scrum. But you're talking about after the, you know, basically the invention of the T formation, um, this is run and run hard and, t you know, small rosters that have what 40 guys or 37 guys so it's not anything close to the same game in terms of the strategy or the the strategy that's allowed you know like there was no keeping five receivers in a roster <laughs> that just didn't exist right so jim brown played in about as tough an era and dominated in about as tough an era as you could possibly imagine and there's the only guys who are up there in terms of toughness and talent, you know, would be guys like Butkus, you know, and Lawrence Taylor, um, you know, who is the, the, the Eagles great linebacker. Chuck Bednarik. Too. Yeah. You know, Bednarik, you know, concrete Chuck is, you know, like there's just a, there's a short list of guys who evoke that kind of respect when you talk about game ability. When you're talking position players too, Jason, don't you agree that Brown, you could make the argument that Jim Brown's the greatest position player. And, and again, the, how I look at it, Jace, because obviously errors are different. I mean, he played 12 games um, the first half of his career, and he still was able to get 12,000 rushing yards in nine seasons. Um, and so there's a lot of factors. Obviously the players are bigger and faster today. Maybe not with the same technique because players, when you went to a team, you stayed on the team. But, I mean, for one guy's error, would you not agree, all the guys that you vote for, would you not say that of all the players that dominated their respected decade, he dominated his decade more than any other player in the history of the NFL? Well, Don Hudson, in, as a wide okay. receiver in Green Bay, you know, is, 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 you know, right up there. And Jerry Rice. Like Jerry Rice's records are still like so far out of reach from a career perspective. But Jace, those guys were reliant on a quarterback and a throwing uh, game. Uh, this uh, guy uh, yeah, was handed I, the I, ball. I, I'm just saying, you know, in terms of how how far out of reach, you know, for a position player, you know, what they do. Um, so like Jim Brown is up there with. Yeah, you know, we're talking rare air, okay? Yeah. And 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 so, you know, are we talk we're talking we're mincing we're mincing qualities among two, three, four guys. Um and and Brown, you could easily say that Brown was the greatest to ever do that. Um he's also like when you go back and you look at it, he looks like a modern running back, you know, a two six foot one, six foot two, two hundred and twenty, two hundred and thirty pound man. Playing against guys who are 250 at the heaviest, which is an advantage for him, but also 
tells you what kind of physical specimen he was to be able to run like that and make moves like that at that size at that era. So I think he's one of the few guys who can play the modern game. It is obviously different, but uh, he's just such a, it's like watching Babe Ruth, you know, film of Babe Ruth and how big he was compared to the guys who were playing baseball back then. Jace, do you agree that he was probably Colin Kaepernick with all those exploits in an era where that wasn't accepted and you couldn't talk like that and it was more foreboden to be like that during segregation and such, that that makes him maybe one of the most important NFL players of all time because now you look back on his stances. He was right. I mean – End of the day, you talk about one of the more important players, not one of the just best players, but important players, and the modern-day player has to be Jim Brown. Like, I always say it this way. If you're an entertainment entertainer, you're in the sports and entertainment field, you have the right to say whatever you want to say. But the crowd generally, you know, for a lot of guys, the crowd, you know, like, tunes you out. There are a handful of guys who can say whatever they want to say and have the impact that they want to hit, have. And Muhammad Ali and Kareem and Jim Brown are on a short list of those guys who they can say whatever it is they want to say and voice their opinion. And people get may get pissed off, but right after that, they go, how much is the ticket? <laughs> I hate that Muhammad Ali guy. He's a blab mouth. He's a this. How much does it cost? Yeah. Oh, it's on, it's on pay-per-view. How much do I have to pay? You know? Oh, Jim Brown's plan? Um, what's it? You know, ticket? Oh, I, I hate what I hate what he said. What's a ticket? Yeah. Like, that's how that works with guys like that. And, you know, it, it may not be fair. It may not be right. But that's how it works. If you're that talented, you can say whatever you want. Couple NFL questions for you. Cowboys are talking potential extension about Dak Prescott. Dak's kind of got him over a barrel again. If you think about some of the parameters that he has in his contract, how important is the 2023 season to the Cowboys and Dak Prescott that they finally get somewhere? I mean, I'm starting to look at the Joel and beat of the NFL wait, here. Wait a second. Does it ever matter? Come on, does it ever really matter? I, I'm, oh, I'm on, asking guys, important questions, it. but then I realize, no, it doesn't. The Cowboys. <laughs> it's just a soap opera. That's all it is, Dan. Ugh. Whether they win, whether they lose, it doesn't matter. So true. It doesn't matter. Terry's printing money in, in, in AT&T Stadium. He's just, you know, it, it, he's it's a joke. It doesn't It doesn't count. Oh, my God, Dak's not very good. Well, we know Dak is not one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. They still got to pay him. Oh, Dak is so bad, we got to cut him. Okay, well, that just adds to the to the, to the the soap opera. It's just a soap opera with the Cowboys. Winning and losing doesn't ultimately really matter to the Cowboys. The soap opera matters to the Cowboys. How do you feel about Super Bowl 60 being – Played in here. Let me wine country and uh, Merlot's being served in the alleyway there at Santa Clara, and uh, breeze uh, and cheese and uh, little wiener dogs and you know. I mean, well, you know, you know where I went. I to want college. a hamburger, dude. You, want, and a you know beer. where I. You know where I went to college. Of There's course no I do. Be- you went to no you, you, you went to that prep school known as Stoffel. There's no place better than Northern California, my man. That is it. There's no place. Dude, you can't have a Super Bowl where you don't sell hamburgers and hot dogs. They'll sell hamburgers and hot dogs. They got a they got a Guy Fieri restaurant in there. What are you talking about? They'll sell they're selling burgers and dogs. I was just there. I was there for games this last season and I went there for a red hot chili peppers concert. They sell plenty of dogs and burgers. Don't don't put out when I went to the last game there, he had something over his arm. He goes, Sir, caviar, chip or cracker. 
I went, dude, I want a beer and a hot dog. Please do me a favor, okay? I mean, yeah, whatever. You live in San Diego. I mean, that's not even... <laughs> Sean Payton's impact. Oh, you, you changed think... that one really. Oh, we like, oh let's go. <laughs> I, I don't like talking about money. <laughs> Uh, see, I'm more like Jalen Hurts. You know, I'm more yeah, yeah. the team. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. So, what about Sean Payton? You're full of crap. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Sean Payton, you think this guy really turns around Russell Wilson? Yeah, because I mean, Russell. Look, Russell's under pressure on, under from two perspectives. Number one, he just played a crappy, crappy season. Number two. This is the guy he's always wanted to play for. It, like, if it doesn't work with this guy, hey, Russ, it's on you, pal. If you can't play well for Sean Payton, it's on you. It ain't on, you know, like the the offensive coordinator from last year. It's not the – or the head Daniel Hackett? Yeah, it's not like, oh, that, that, that schmuck, uh, you know, he wasn't very good. It's his fault. No, no, no. You got the guy you want. The guy who coached Drew Brees, won a Super Bowl, got to the playoffs a bunch of times, helped Drew Brees set a bunch of records, go to the Hall of Fame, blah, 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 blah. This guy knows what he's doing. It's on you, pal. And you begged for him, too. You begged for him to come and, and coach Yeah, you. but Jace isn't both guys. I mean, I mean, look, Sean Payton. Had Drew Sean, Brees. Sean, I mean. Sean, 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 hey, look, I understand how it really works, but I'm talking about public perception and perception that Russell Wilson has to live with. If Russell Wilson does not make this work, it's on Russell Wilson. So it's all on him right now. Cake bed Merlot, please, and a nice little. Chianti. I don't even drink wine. I don't even know who you're talking to. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking shut, to the waiter. That your, see, most people have vendors at football stadiums. In Santa Clara, they have waiters. Okay, it's a high. Hey. It's a classy place. It's a classy place. You wouldn't necessarily. Oh, know oh, what oh that's wait a about. minute! You're not that's suggesting that those right. are true Forty Nine er fans. You went to you went to UM. That's right. Hold that's on! Right. You're not suggesting that those are true Forty Nine er fans. In hey, Santa look, Clara. dude! I was here in the '80s. I I went to college in the '80s. I know what the true 49er fans were, and they were the same wine sippers and snobs in the, the 80s that though. they are now. Yeah, and they, you know what they did? They broke out tables with checkered cloths and drank wine in the parking lot. It's no, It was no different back then. Don't kid yourself. It's not a rough and tumble guy. They haven't been rough and tumble since they were at Keysar, and it was working class, and it was union guys going, and it was all, you know, union guys and all the Irish and Italian cops. That's what it was at Keysar. Oh, see how we threw in the then. Italian guys from the hey, from North because, Beach? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> that's what it was. You want to know what it was? I'm telling you, that's what it was. You threw all it the was... Italians in from North Beach at Pop Pasta Pomodoro. Okay, I, I got that's it. Right. That's what I'm talking about. And all, yeah, right. You know, it was that was the crowd back in the 50s and 60s. You know, before they had to. You know, I mean, I'll tell you, I covered a game in Kizar. Uh, you know, a high school game in Kizar. There were like 200 people there. There were more seagulls in the stands than there were people. Hey, hey, that was a spooky hey, place. A somebody cool in the place, middle though. of the game, somebody goes, Did, "Didn't didn't didn't uh, Dirty Harry shoot the guy in this place?" I'm yes, like, yeah, that's where, where it happened. Yes, that was Kizar. Hey, get this though. One, I went I went to that place, and that is one of the coolest places on the planet because the Raiders played there too, yeah. and they downsized that place. But that Kizar Stadium, man, that's got a lot of history there. The old if you ever the old go, they play high is, school games there now. Yeah, the, the, it's a soccer stadium in, a, in yeah. the high school. Like, I think Sacred Heart High School still plays there. It's Kevin Gogan's alma mater, Absolutely. Sacred Heart. That's oh, killer, guy. man. I didn't know that. Jace, have a Kill, great yeah. weekend, my right, friend. Dude, I'll talk to you. Be good. You got it. That's our friend, Jason Cole. Please do me a favor. Hit the like button. Keep it here on the national.